What could a programmer possibly have in common with a photographer? Or with a mechanic, perhaps? Well, they are all masters of their own trades. Or are they? Good question, Sir David. How should we introduce ourselves to others? I am a programmer, but am I only a backend programmer? And being an introvert, the answer can be exhausting for me sometimes because people would ask me if I know Java, but I only specialized in PHP. Great, so I could install WordPress then. Well, I only work with Laravel and Codeigniter. Make a web shop? No, I only do content management systems. So as many other programs, I was using only a few libraries and perhaps a single programming language. But are you a real programmer if all you can use is one tool? Same if you're a photographer. And that actually happened to me. And that got me thinking. I was here on my favorite illegal camping spot one night, taking photos of a sunset over beautiful Bergen. And a young couple, all excited, asked me to take a photo of them. Probably I looked like a pro with my big cameras and tripods and everything. And I was sort of proud and I was sort of scared. I took the photo, they looked at it, and then uh, they asked somebody else to take a photo of them again. And I remember talking to myself, well, I'm not photographing people anyway. I only take photos of sunsets. It's their fault. And the same excuse I used when I started my programming career. I was focused only on one thing. But uh, maybe it's useful to know a bit more about the things I do. You see, I started my career with full focus on PHP and MySQL, making CMSs and other applications for our clients. And we had our own set of tools like that we liked and used, like Smarty and Moo tools. And that was before jQuery was popular. And I was very, very comfortable with these. And I would strategically hate things like Code Igniter, Zend and Laravel, because uh, I guess I was so full of myself at the time. I would be that guy on forums, promoting only the frameworks I was using fanatically. And I would put down everyone else who would think differently. Because who knew programming better than me? And also which tool is the best? I didn't realize it back then that if all you can use is a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail. But my problem actually was that I wanted to move to another city. And I went on a few interviews and suddenly realized that, uh, well, not all companies work with the same tools as me. They use different frameworks, they use different tools. Even some tools that I hated with passion. And I would sit there on the interview and bite my tongue not to start convincing them to drop everything that they use and then switch to my favorite set of tools. For whatever reason, they still wanted to hire me, believing that I could learn new things and adapt. At least some of us believed that, as I was honestly not sure if I could or I wanted to change. It meant leaving my entire specialization, all my beliefs, and then start from zero with something that uh, I really hated. I thought other technologies are beneath me, you see. I will come back to this later, but I did move to another city. However, there was a twist. So I laid in bed that evening after the interview, thinking about my freshly burst bubble, that everyone else uses exactly the tools that I use, and that I will never have to change my specialization. And that realization didn't go particularly well with my already bad sleeping habits. The day before the interview, I felt good about being a master of custom PHP application, but that night, I was a bit afraid of being a master of one. But as a master of one, you're the best in what you do. You can reach very high in that one thing that you're doing because you're the expert. You can be rewarded well while doing it. You're the man who knows all the tricks, have all cards up your sleeve. If you get good enough, you might get completely new opportunities. Top companies fighting for your expertise. You will skip interviews and you will receive some generous offers for your services. But it can prevent you from growing as a developer and maybe even as a person. You will see how others use some new and shiny tools, some new frameworks and things, and you will feel stuck and insecure. Also, if your responsibilities grow and you need to manage more people in different areas of your project, you need to understand those different parts of your project. And I'm not talking about just programming and technical parts here. You might need to understand budgets, leadership, communication with people, resolving conflicts, marketing, planning, etc. So while I was lying in my bed that night as a master of only one thing, besides the imposter syndrome beating the hell out of me, I started worrying, what if our company goes bankrupt and I have to use some other tools? What if one day I had to use some uh, open source frameworks or even worse? What if I had to use WordPress? Just kidding, I like WordPress. Or do I? Anyway, my desire for independence kicked in again, as well as the fear of becoming replaceable. So I started slowly learning new things outside of my specialization. 
I was scared that if I maybe spread my knowledge too wide and become a jack of all trades, I will not be valuable on the market, not being able to get better salary in the future maybe. And that is a valid concern, as historically, expertise was always the smartest choice. There was only one blacksmith in the entire kingdom, and only he would sharpen the king's swords. Travelers from far, far away would come only to him to do the job with him. But a long, long time ago, the only way to learn something good was by being apprentice and actually watch the blacksmith do the job in front of you. So you had to specialize. You could not afford to do two things at the same time. It was just not possible. There was no time for it. And probably the same is true today. But today, uh, unlike from before, all possible knowledge, especially in programming, is available for free on the internet. So when you want to learn something, in, especially in programming, the only thing from stopping you is you. It is actually a bit difficult to get hired if you are a one-trick pony, if you think about it. No, it's not. Okay, maybe it's not. But from my experience, at least in the last 10 companies I worked at, we never hired somebody only because of their skills in one single tool. Proof of progress is much more desired. We always expected that programmers are willing to learn new things, preferably on their own. And this is what's called collective learning, where individuals in some team learn on their own, and they could teach others then in their team all that new gained knowledge. And I'm coincidentally studying the organizational leadership right now and deal with all systematic learning, and I find it very interesting and very fascinating. Because guess what? Times are changing, so are the tools and programming languages and you will need the desire to change and to improve. At the end, we are paid to make or improve some product, not just to use some tools. I have few friends working in consulting companies as what we call a hired gun. They can do a lot of things and do it good, and they do make a lot of money, but they can just hop in a project that needs attention and contribute to it right away. Those guys are welcome in every company that has real money, and here I mean real money. And sometimes we cannot even choose. Sometimes we are just forced into new things. I also have a few friends who work here as mechanics in Norway, here, and they work their entire life on race cars, you know, the pure mechanical things, petrol in Greece. And today they work at Tesla service here in Norway, and they spend about 80% of their time just reading logs the Tesla car makes. So most of their time now they sit in front of the PC and from time to time they replace some part or reset the fuse. So the realization that I am uh, not that important and that uh, I need to let go of some of my favorite tools and some of my favorite programming languages, it changed me. I started working on expanding my knowledge. How can I be more than just a tool user? So I began sharpening my organizational and communicational skills. I started learning general principles of programming, clean code, solid and dry principles, design patterns, etc. Even though main focus are still web apps with API integration in PHP, I also work a lot of with single page applications in Angular and JavaScript, in TypeScript, even mobile applications made with Ionic. And Angular was once uh, a temporary thing just to try it out, but then I fell in love with TypeScript and now I use it a lot. I would also from time to time go into home automation uh, with programming in Python, Lua, turn on off the lighting and everything in the house. Even with 3D modeling and electronics with Arduino, whatever is needed to finish the project I was working on, I would do it. And I have never ever noticed that now I know less than I did before I started something new. I mentioned earlier me moving to another town and uh, after I quitted in the old company, I started summarizing and transferring all my tasks and responsibilities. And uh, very soon pretty much everyone concluded that I worked on too many things at the same time and that replacing me would take more than just one programmer. So they made me an offer I could not refuse. They doubled my salary and gave me a new remote position. And I basically had no choice but to stay and accept the offer. Oh, I remember the joy of doubling the salary and still managing to spend it all in one month. But that is a different video. So without me even realizing it back at the time, it was mostly my other skills that got me both a raise and a new position. And I believed I was master of one, but I was somehow already both. I could do programming reasonably well, but being able to organize our team, communicate with clients, organize our workflow, document it all, all that combined, in my opinion at least, made me a bit more valuable member than just the program. And my boss and mentor at the time, Bata, he told me once, while we were drunk in a bar under the table, that he would even hire me had I even failed the technical interview. He liked my energy, but mostly my persistence to tackle some difficult problems. In fact, on one of my recent performance interviews, reviews, 
main thing that people commented on and that they noticed was the ability to jump into new projects and new technology and contribute to it relatively fast. And that's not because I am particularly smart or a good programmer, trust me, I'm not. But I am persistent and I do cover my programming basics. So, what are you saying? We can be both at the same time? Well, why not? It's not that if like we learn something new today that we are going to forget everything that we knew from before. New skills are learned faster actually when we have a wider base of knowledge to build upon. It is easier to associate new knowledge with the things that we already know and just build upon of that on that foundation rather than learn it all from the ground up only in one vertical. And when you have a good foundation of knowledge, of principles, it takes maybe three or six months or maybe a year to master something new, some new skill or some new functionality or some new programming language. So start with something that you're passionate about and that you like, or that's maybe interesting in your market, and, but do not be afraid to learn things that are not directly related, both to programming, but also to other skills as well. It of course depends on where you want to be in five years or when you grow up, whichever comes first. But remember that Darwin's theory doesn't say that the strongest and the biggest ones survive. It's the ones who can best adapt to the changes. Thank you, Dalibor. As usual, this doesn't make any sense. Perhaps this video about two types of programming careers is a better one. Watch it right now.